Okay, so I've explained to you how um, once we knew what we were looking for, once we knew that um, from our studies of viruses that there were these key um, human sequences which are, are important in controlling growth, once we knew what to look for, we knew to look for, say, the RAS gene, once you get the tumor samples and look for it, you can see it's got the mutation. Okay, so <clears throat> there's a, another good example from the from this recommended reading book, the, um, the um, Weinberg's Biology of Cancer, that um, they, they, they talk about the strange case of Burkitt's lymphoma. Okay, so again, this is a good example because you can clearly understand once you look at this example how they found the gene that was involved in cancer. Okay, so. Um, so what was happening here is that um, people were looking at the, um, the, the these um, the, the, these cells the, from 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 patients, and they were looking at um, the cells during um, meiosis. So during um, metaphase, where the chromosomes condense, you can count the number of chromosomes and look at the look at the, the shapes of the chromosomes. And we all know that they should be paired and all, be, all you know, they, they should be, um, we all, they all know what normal ones look like. So in, in the case of Burkitt's lymphoma, when they looked at the metaphase chromosomes, they identified some abnormalities which were, could be seen down a microscope. So this is one of those ways you could pick up the genetic change even though you didn't really have a good technique to sequence back in those days. Okay, so they picked up these chromosomal translocations that were identified in patients who had this kind of lymphoma. And um, so in these alterations, effectively, part of one chromosome was being broken off and attaching to another chromosome, and vice versa. So effectively, what they were noticing when they looked at these metaphase chromosomes from this lymphoma sample is that typically chromosome 8, and this is just showing one arm of the chromosome, would be a certain length. And typically, chromosome 14 in a normal cell would be of a shorter length. So that they had these, um, they, knew, they knew what these chromosomes should look like in normal cells. But in the tumor cells, a translocation had occurred, whereas the, um, the bottom of this chromosome had, had effectively broken and been transferred and been exchanged. So this was occurring. There was this mutual exchange between sequences from chromosome 8 and 14. Okay, I'll show that again just to um, show you what's happening. There's this mutual translocation of sequence from one chromosome to another. And typically this would involve um, chromosome 8 and another chromosome such as chromosome 14. Okay, So this is called a chromosomal translocation. And somehow this, um, this translocation was thought to be involved in driving um, the lymphoma as, as a tumor. So something about the sequence here, once the translocation occurs, causes those cells to be transformed into um, part of this multi-hit um, of, of transformation. So this is the diagram of the textbook showing that um, this is the normal chromosomes and in Burkitt's lymphoma, the two ends have been swapped and um, when you look at the actual gene sequences that have been swapped it turns out that the MYC gene which is one of these oncoproteins is translocated onto an, into another region and the MYC gene now is being expressed not from its normal um, promoter but from one of these immunoglobin promoters is driving the expression of the gene. So in the case of Burkitt's lymphoma, there were these distinct chromosomal translocations, um, typically involving chromosome 8 being fused with a section of chromosome um, 14, 2, or 22. Okay? And um, so what is it about these translocations um, that's causing... Um, the tumor. So, like I've already said to you, the, the MYC protein was on chromosome 8, and this sequence was being translocated to another chromosome, and then the MYC protein was being expressed by an inappropriate promoter. So, 
Um, so once the translocation occurs, the MYC gene is being put beside these immunoglobin um, promoters. Okay, so um, there's a diagram here showing the normal chromosomes here. So these are the two normal chromosomes, 8 and 14, that we've been looking at in these other diagrams. And here you can see that in the translocation, the promoter for the um, immunoglobin is then being um, attached to that promoter, the CMYC um, gene sequence gets added to it. So you get this, um, this constructed um, sequence here of an oncogene being transformed into um, um, a, a tumor agent because it's being expressed from the immunoglobin um, promoter. So th th this process is being driven by normal cellular biology. Okay, and I don't know if you've got the background knowledge to appreciate this, but when you look at immunoglobin genes, the immunoglobin genes express um, antibodies that recognize antigens. So lots of different um, things the body has to respond to are recognized by these um, immunoglobin genes. So within the immunoglobin gene sequences, in normal biology, you get um, gene rearrangements. So the gene sequences are being chopped up and, and, and reorganized. And part of this, um, the outcome of this is that you get these different gene sequences giving rise to these different antibodies. So you get variety in antibody format, you know, antibody sequences because of this gene rearrangement. But sometimes this gene rearrangement goes wrong, and rather than rearranging the um, immunoglobin gene on one chromosome, the, the cell um, takes a sequence from another chromosome and mixes that up with the immunoglobin gene. So this is a bit of normal um, re gene rearrangement occurring, but it's gone wrong, and it's included another sequence in the re rearrangement. And unfortunately, the sequence that's been included tends to be this MYC oncogene put upstream or downstream of one of these um, high, um, highly active promoters, so that the MYC protein is produced at high levels in the cell when it shouldn't be, and it's produced at the wrong times in the cell as well. So, so the enzymes that are normally responsible for rearranging um, sequences of the antibody genes, it inadvertently fuses part of the MYC proto-oncogene to the wrong promoter. And the upshot of this is that the C-MYC gene is then being transcribed at a high rate from the immunoglobin genes, or the immunoglobin gene promoter. Um, so again, once people understood that these translocations were occurring and causing um, gene dysregulation, people have looked at, um, um, have identified a bunch of these important proteins that are getting translocated and in, in these different cancer types. So there's no need to you know, remember what these are, but it just tells you that this is a common process for, um, for um, inappropriate expression of these oncoproteins in normal human cells.